morning, everyone. Good morning. Everybody get your hymn book and turn to number 533. 533. I want to hear you sing. Now, I hear you talking. I know you can sing well. Let's stand and sing. 533. <clears throat> I serve the risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of tears. I trust the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives. close call, well, it could have been a lot worse than what it was, real easy, and we're just thankful that you're here and we're praying that you're not overdoing it, so we're just thankful that everybody's here this morning. Amen. Uh, as far as our announcements go, uh, uh, the care ministry, the card makers and the card senders are the only people meeting right now. And they'll be meeting at 6 o'clock to work on their cards. And uh, there are some people you know that uh, can't come or uh, don't feel comfortable coming. And 
Anita has uh, has a packet of uh, cards that you can get with her, and you can fill those out at home, and she'll work with you on who to send them to and who to. Okay. All right. Okay, so you'll just be able to decorate those cards at home and then bring them back for the care ministry to use. So if, if you're interested in doing that, see Anita, because she has them with her. So uh, take advantage of that. Uh, uh, looks like the Baptist Association is meeting this week, and Pat and Arnold are going to be our messengers. It's a revised version of how it's normally done, so uh, be praying for that to, to carry out good. And uh, looks like there's a baby shower there that uh, we uh, can be involved with. That's on September the 5th, so uh, look at that and be involved in that if you can. Any other announcements? Very last Sunday, we collected 377 cans of food. Amen. So we just want to thank the church for that. And we collected a whole bunch of bottles. So if anybody forgot or anybody who has extra little room, we'd be glad to take it. Uh, September's coming up, and we've changed instead of uh, backpacks and small blankets, we want backpacks and boys clubs if anybody can help us with that in September. But still collecting food, top, top cans of food, so backpacks. So remember that and be involved with that if you can. Any other announcements? None that you can give us an answer this evening at 5 o'clock. Okay. Nominating committees meeting at five o'clock this evening, so remember that. And remember them too. That uh, and uh, remember that uh, you've got a job somewhere. Just be willing to do that, Amen. and uh, that helps the nominate committee. That helps the church, and uh, that's uh, that's what we need. Any other announcements? On our uh, prayer request, you know our, we have a, a long list there with a lot of names on it. Just be sure that uh, we're checking on those and doing what we can there. <clears throat> Good to have Betty back and just remember to keep her and Judy and the family in your prayers uh, as they go through this time. Any other prayer requests this morning? Can you remember uh, Lisa Weber and also uh, Jan Buchanan? Should we go back to 21st to find out something about her heart or, or to the heart doctor? Floyd's going to have a, a stress test. I think Mary Alice is going to have an MRI, so if you remember that. Uh, Gary Fox family, which was in the bulletin, if you remember that. Uh, May Sparks wants to remember her. Uh, Lisa, uh, I said Lisa. Ruby Green, she had a reaction. I ain't got to talk to her since then, but can you lift her up to prayer? I know I left some out. I want to thank everybody uh, for every call, every card, every text, even all those good words of advice. I had one guy come in today and really uplift me. He said, brother, he said, if you're going to be stupid, you got to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really appreciate those words of encouragement. <laughs> Yeah, we may have to get him a rocking chair that don't rock. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray. I remember Benny Smith and Lily Lou. They both had this long name. He didn't want to be away like that. Let's remember that. Any other prayer request? Remember my brother, Buster Young. Remember that. Let's pray. God, we're just so thankful that you allow us to pray and that you want to hear from us and you want to tell us and show us that you care for us. God, we're just so thankful for that. God, we're just thankful this morning we can be in this place. We can learn more about you and learn how to follow you and how to rely on your Holy Spirit to guide us. God, we thank you for our pastor, and we just thank you for taking care of him and 
God, we just pray you'll continue to heal him and, and uh, let him be the servant that he wants to be and that you want him to be. God, and again, we just pray for each one of these on our prayer list that, that we'll care for them and through your Holy Spirit, they'll know that you care for them. God, again, we just thank you for your love and for your forgiveness. In your name we pray. Amen.
our pastor's pals to come on up this morning. Get our pastor's pals to come on up. talking to all the adults and even to the small children. Everybody that's here, I'm going to be talking to them about fear. And fear is a real thing. And uh, I'll uh, ask you some questions here in just a minute. But right here, this is going to be us right here. Uh-oh, there we go. This flame is going to represent us. Now that flame, it's strong, it's standing up straight. And it's a very powerful flame. That's you and I when we're not afraid. Now, I want to ask you, what are some things that you're afraid of? Is anybody afraid of, uh, how many have been afraid of the dark before? You ever been afraid of the dark, dark places? Okay. I'm afraid of rain. You're afraid of what? Rain? Okay. All right. We'll put dark and we'll put rain. Okay. All right. Uh, has anybody ever been scared of a thunderstorm? Boom, bam, and all that lightning and stuff, okay. We'll put down thunderstorm, okay. How, bad, how many people's ever had a bad dream and had to go run to mom and daddy to bed? Okay, bad dreams. And I remember uh, I used to have a pastor's pal. We'd go to the 4th of July and these different things where they do fireworks and then big boom and bang and all that. She'd get scared and she'd have to sit in the car. So she was scared of loud noises. Has anybody? What was her name? Her name was Corinne Miller. <laughs> Y'all remember that, Corinne Miller. Y'all can tell all Mitchell County. <laughs> all right. And, and then there was another one I, I remember. Have, has anybody ever got lost? You know, you've been in the store and all of a sudden your mama and daddy, you didn't see them for just a minute. That, that you was afraid right then. So all these things, you know, different things makes us get afraid. So let me fold this up here, and I want to make something, try to. All this dead time here. Anybody got a testimony or anything you want to do? <laughs> all right, we're fixing to get it. But I'm going to make this. Here, we're going to make, this is going to be a fan. You've seen fans before, haven't you? made one before? Yeah, I okay. saw one. You got one, okay. Now watch, watch that flame. You see how up and straight it is? Now watch this. It ain't doing nothing, is it? There we go. <laughs> there we go. You see how it's moving? Okay, this, I put all our fears on this piece of paper. And that's the way Satan is. He'll take all our fears and he'll put them out there and try to scare us. But we're going to talk about today, there's a king, his name is Hezekiah. And he was going to—he was afraid, and I'll tell you the story in just a minute. So here, this this little bag right here is going to represent prayer. You can't see our prayers; we can hear our prayers, and they'll go up to heaven. But if we put our prayers between Satan, look there—is anything happening? No. So that's what we have to remember to do. Whenever we're afraid, we pray, and that puts like a shield out there for us. And God hears our prayer, and we'll talk about Hezekiah and how God heard his prayer. So let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for uh, what we sung, the last song the, about prayer, that wall of prayer. And God, that just fits right into what we're going to preach on today. And I thank you, God, that we have that. And I pray we can teach these children the importance to pray. Whenever you're afraid or whenever something's going wrong, all you got to do is talk to God and he'll hear you. He'll be there for you. And I ask God that you bless them in a mighty and a very special way. And I pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. You like them? You don't like them? Let me see what I can come up with. You like cookies, don't you? All right, there you go. You want cookies too? Okay, we'll, we might have a few more cookies. You want a cookie or a cheese? All right, there you go. What you want? 
Here you go. Which one do you want, young lady? One to fifty. All right. Again, I'm blessed to be here. I thank God for it. Uh, you, you just wouldn't understand. <laughs> this time last Sunday, I took a bullet. And I don't know what took y'all so long in your prayers to get my pain to go away, but thank God somebody got one through. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was tough for, for a few days. And I do thank you for again for all that you've done, prayers, cards, visits, and everything, food. Uh, money, everything that somebody's done, I appreciate it very much. Uh, my wife, she about had enough of me. I'd whine long enough, and she come in there with a block of cheese and hit me in the head with it and said, here's some cheese to go along with all that whining you do. <laughs> no, she didn't do that. I thank her for being a, a good nurse and patient with me. Today I want to talk to you how to overcome fear in an overcome world. How to overcome fear in an overcome world. We're going to be looking at 2 Kings 19. And uh, I know you've uh, seen that in the bulletin. So if you have that, I want you to please stand for the reading of God's holy, inerrant, infallible word. 2 Kings 19, we'll start with verse 1. The Bible reads, And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes. What did he hear? that the Syrian army was fixing to attack him. That's what he heard. And he covered himself with sackcloth, and he went into the house of the Lord. And he said, Elikim, and he was over the household. And Shebna, the scribe, and the elders of the priest, covered with sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amazon. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke, and of blasphemy, for the children are come to the birth, and there is not enough to bring forth. It may be that the Lord will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God, and will prove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayers for this remnant that are left. So the servant of the king of Hezekiah came to, excuse me. So the servant of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words which I have heard, which the servant of the king of Assyria has blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast unto him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Now let's go to verse 14. And Hezekiah received a letter. This letter is coming from the, the messenger of the Syrian army. And uh, was handed of the messenger. And he read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord, and he spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, that dwelleth between the cherubims, and thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear, and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes, and see, and hear the words of Shenecterib, which has sent him to reproach the living God. Of the truth, Lord, the king of Assyria, have destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into fires. He's just saying, this is what this guy's done. And they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, Therefore, they were destroyed by them. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save thou us of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. And now let's look at verse 35. And the Bible says, And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote the camp of the Assyrians, a hundred and forty and five thousand. And were they, excuse me, and when they rose up early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpse. Our Heavenly Father, I just ask, Lord, the, the blessings on the reading of your word, and I ask you, Lord, to help me stay on track and 
God, help me to hammer in, God, just what you're saying to all of us here. And Lord, again, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for what we've done, felt here today, God, through song. And God, we just say again, thanks for it all. And I pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. As you look around the, the world today, as you listen to the world today, you hear and you see fear on the hearts and the lives of people all around the world. It's not just right here. You, you see that. Uh, it's even starting to come into the place of Christian lives. Christians are starting to have a fear that they did not once have. It's even being seen uh, through uh, uh, what's going on again in America, the rioting and stuff. We, we hear fear trying to be taught by one party to the other party and fear from the other party to the other party. They're trying to place fear in the hearts and the lives of, of people. But fear, uh, you have to watch, about, watch out about fear. Fear can put you in a place where you feel you have no hope. Fear can make you come to a place in your life where you think that you're going crazy. Fear can come and, 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 and make you think you're fit fixing to face something dangerous when it's not really there. Fear has a very big hold on people, especially in this nation. Again, there's uh, fear of what's taking place. There's families having issues. There's uh, financial issues going on, people being out of work. There's government issues that's being taken place. Again, we see the rioting and the, uh, uh, the, the looting and all this going on. And it's got in people's heart. There, there's a fear there that they need to be able to deal with. And as I've preached many times and have used this verse, God had not give us a spirit of fear. He wants us to be strong, and that's what I want us to know. A philosopher, his name was Emerson, said this right here. He tells us that fear springs out of ignorance. Two weeks ago, I preached on this uh, out of 1 Thessalonians. Paul talking to the uh, Christians there not to be ignorant of what was fixing to come take place. Was, and I preached on the second coming of Christ. Today, I, I, I want to preach to you. I don't want anybody to be ignorant here about what's taking place in the land and the, the world that we are living in right now. We can live by fear or you can live by faith. We've heard that many times. Anybody ever heard that before, live by fear or faith? Okay, we need to choose which one we're going to live by today. So I want us to go in, in God's Word and look this morning at what's taking place. We're talking about King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah, he was a good king. He was a godly king if you read about it. He, he took kingship at a very young age. And even though he did, he, he stood strong. All the other uh, uh, countries right around him, uh, uh, Jerusalem, they were paying tributes. They were paying things to keep this Assyrian king from coming down and, and bothering them. And, uh, but he wouldn't do it. But 13 years went by. If you, you read this, all of it again, it's what it adds up to. He had stood strong, but in 13 years, then fear set in on his heart. And when fear set on his heart, he said, well, I'm going to go pay tribute. So he went down to the temple and he got gold off the walls and silver. And he, he was bringing that tribute to the Assyrians, you know, so they would leave him alone, that they wouldn't uh, charge in on Jerusalem. But they told him, that's not what we want. We're not, we don't care about your tribute now. We're going to march in and we're going to take your city. We're going to take it all. And there was fear that was there. And then the, uh, what I didn't read, there's several, a lot of, that I didn't read, it, it talks about these two messengers. There was a messenger from Hezekiah, and then there was a messenger that uh, come from a uh, 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 Assyrian army. And uh, have you ever heard of trash talk? Anybody ever heard of what trash talk is? That's like when two boxers get up there and they're looking face to face, and one of them's calling a lot of trash here, and he's talking a lot of trash there, and, and trying to scare the other ones. And that's what took place. This Assyrian messenger come in. And when he come in, he, he started talking to Hezekiah's messengers. He said, let me tell you something, buddy. He said, you have not an army that's able to stand against our army. Let me tell you something else. He says, your God can't stand against our God because look at all these other nations we tore up. He said, you don't have the horses, you don't have the chariots, you don't have the arrows, you don't have the bows, you don't have the ability. Man, we destroy everybody. All you have to do is look back and you can see just how bad we really are. Trash talk. And them old boys, they, they had them shook. You ever been shook before? You ever had some words come to you and shake you? Hey, they had them shook up. 
And they took that, that letter, they, they took that message, and they came and they give it to old Hezekiah. Now there's two things he could do. He could either submit to Shenechtereb, or he could either submit to a holy and a gracious God. And that's what I want you to understand today. You've got two choices today. You can submit to the devil and his fear, or you can submit, uh, submit to a God who is faithful, who loves you, who has taken care of you, and has brought you already through a lot of things in your life. Don't fear. That's what I'm, I'm trying to say today. So what is the truth? What are some truths on how we can uh, overcome fear in a fearful world? The first truth is this. That's on your outline right. Turn to God's Word. You just got to turn to God's Word. And that's exactly what took place right here. Uh, don't listen to your enemy. Your enemy will blow your ever-loving mind. Your enemy is going to be talking to you all the time, that trash talk. Your enemy is going to tell you what might happen, what could happen, what he wants you to think might happen. He, he's doing that. And, and people are doing that today. We're, we're, people are worried about what, what's going to happen if this takes place. What's going to take, what happen if this takes place? Folks, you need to quit worrying about the, what the devil's telling you and I believe in a true and a living God and understand he's going to survive us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to help us no matter what takes place. Amen. Amen. God's people don't have to fear. God's people need to get out of their little sissiness and start being men and women of God and young people of God and not worry about all the things that are taking place. There's, hey, the devil does a lot of trash talking. He's probably talked a lot of trash to some of y'all this way. He was talking a lot of trash to me. <laughs> you just got to put him in his place. You put him where he's at. You let, turn him over to God. But God, what takes place? Hezekiah. He turns to God's word. Look at verse 2. And it said, and he is talking about Hezekiah sent Elimelech, uh, Elikim, which was over the household. And Sheba, the scribe, and the elders and the priests were covered with sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. So what took place? Hezekiah wanted a word from God. That's, when you turn to the word of God, that's what's going to help people. So he, this is the first time Isaiah comes on the scene, this prophet. A prophet, if you understand, in that day, he, he was the one who handled the Word of God. He's the one who spoke the Word of God. He's the one who gave out the Word of God to the people. And thank the Lord, He's gave us this Word right here. It's right here before us that we can read this story, this truth, to be able to encourage us. So as he comes and he's listening to the Word of God, and look how Isaiah responded to Hezekiah. When you, get, when you listen to the Word of God and you pay attention, listen, listen to what God did in verse 6 and verse 7. And it said, And Isaiah said unto them, Here's the prophet, the Word of God. Go to your master. Thus saith the Lord. What's those next words? Be not afraid. That's what we need to be. Be not afraid of the words. See, he said, Don't be afraid of the words that this old boy is saying, the trash talk which thou hast heard, which, excuse me, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. They're not coming against you. They're coming against me. And it says, Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and he shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. He, he, he said, Don't worry about it. Don't pay no attention to this old boy right here. I'm going to take care of you. In verse 32, uh, uh, let me just read this to you. I know I didn't read this, but here's some more of an answered prayer. The, therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he said, I mean, he shall not come into thy city, nor shoot an arrow at the, there, nor become before thee with a shield, nor cast a bank against thee. He said, this old boy ain't even going to get into town. This old boy is not even going to make it across the, 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 the state line. He's going to be on the other side. And that's what we have to understand. God can take whatever we're fear. Hey, we might not be feared one blessed thing about the government or anything about that. The coronavirus. We might not be feared about that. It might be a job. It might be a marriage. It might be a child. It might be something else. Whatever we're fearing. Hey, God says, be not afraid. And God can take care of it. And it's an easy preaching up here, but it's hard living. He says, don't be afraid. And He's going to take care of this situation. When we, when we put fear aside and start living by faith, something inside of us uh, explodes. Something that's like dynamite. It gives you courage and it gives you help. 
How did these prophets, how did the disciples, how, I mean, they feared their life. They were fixing to be killed, some of them, in the New Testament. But they stood tall. They stood strong. Missionaries all over the, the world today still put their life on the line. How? They're not afraid because they're putting their faith and trust in God. Amen. And when this country once again puts their faith and trust in God, and when people once again put their faith and trust in God, we ain't going to have the fear running around that's running around in the day that you and I are living See, see the, the, the world, not the world, uh, Satan. Anybody ever heard about positive thinking? You think positive, you can do anything. You know, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I want to tell you what, you can think you can all you want to, but you ain't going to do it a lot of times. You know, that little train, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Right? Come on. This is what you got to say. I know I can. 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 Why do I know I can? Because greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. Hey, I, I don't have to fear anything on this side of the world because my God. He said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. No, it don't matter if it's your health. It don't matter if it's your wealth. It don't matter if it's your children. It doesn't matter if it's your enemies. You don't have to be afraid because God is in charge and He's going to take care of things. We, we, when we start looking at things uh, in the eternal, Instead of the external. You, you look at things that's ahead and said all this stuff that's uh, choking us down. You, we start looking at the things that, that God uh, gives us the power to, to be able to overcome. Then we'll start being strong once again. God doesn't want you to run from your fear. He doesn't want me to run from my fear. This, this, this old nurse come in there. And I'm afraid of the needle. Bless God. I mean, shoot me with a gun, but don't point a needle at me. But I'm going to tell you, when she came in there with that needle, I was tickled to death to see that thing after a while. They give you enough dope, you don't care, man. It's just happy to be there. But I, I'm, I'm afraid. Am I not afraid of a needle, honey? I, I just soon go ahead and get out of this world. Somebody stick me. But I'm saying, I, I had to sit there, and I didn't have to fear that needle. I know I was going through pain, but I'm just trying to say this right here. God was there with me. A little needle, and here is a 255. Let me go 50. 50 sounds better than 55. A 250 pound lean, mean fighting machine, scared of a needle. How stupid. Because I got a God that can do anything and everything. And he's done everything. He's made everything. He's helped every one of us in some way, fashion. Is sitting here today, I believe. And here I am trying to be fearful of a needle. I'm trying to say how small that is. And what we have to look at is my problems and your problems with situations we're up against that's pressing up against us. All of them, just like a little blessed needle. It means nothing. He can take care of those situations. You turn to God, but... Turning to God's words, one thing, but you got to do something else. You got to trust Him. That's right. If you don't trust God, man, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. I mean, a lot of yeah, I believe God, but if you don't trust God with it, uh, it's a whole different situation. Again, He said He was going to deliver them, and you may need to uh, uh, to uh, claim that right now, God. That's your promise. You said you were going to deliver me. You said I didn't have to fear God. You said that you were going to help me. God, whatever it is I'm up against, I know that you're bigger than what that is. But Satan, again, he'll come up to you, he'll come up to me, and he'll try to buffalo you. I mean, he likes to do that in your life and mine. I think of all the words that he's said to people that I know that he's buffaloed. While they, while, 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 this is some words that, that he, Satan says to people. If God is so good, why did he let that happen to you? Why did he let that happen to your child? Why did he let it happen that to your mate? Why did he let that uh, disease happen to you? If God is so good, see, he can buffalo you. And I've known people just to, to quit church and leave church because he buffaloed. He, he, he'll buffalo you, and he'll tell you things like, uh, uh, you, you're reading that Bible. That Bible, it, it doesn't really mean what it says. And, and that's, what the, that's what's wrong with the world today. The people don't believe what the Bible says. If you don't believe what the Bible says, I don't believe you can be saved. Hold on. If you don't believe this from the back to the front to the back, 
every word of it's true and every bit of it applies to me and you, I don't believe you can be saved because the Bible says in the book of Revelation you can't take away and you can't add to. And that's what the world's trying to do now is add to the Word of God and take away from the Word of God to make it say what they want their God to be. My God tells me who He's going to be and what He's going to be and how I need to pay attention to Him. So, so Satan, he's, he's telling you, that Bible don't mean what it says. It does mean what it says. Period. It, it, it'll get you about worshiping. I've known people to quit worshiping. It, I, and it, it, again, it's over music. What kind of music do we have? How many are going to leave heaven if you don't like what they're singing up there? <laughs> Just tell them. How many? What if they ain't got the Gaithers in heaven? What if they got hill song in heaven and all it is is praise music and you're not going to hear another southern gospel music? Or you just like, well, I think I'll leave. <laughs> huh? Come on. Satan the buffalo, he'll tell you junk, he'll get you out of church, he'll get you so disgusted, he'll get you so down that you're ready to give up. But you can't give up. Anybody remember, hey, there's a, there's a song out there and I heard it on the way to church today and I know God gave it to me. It said, I, I, the name of the song is this. Satan's a liar. He is a liar. That's what it is. He is a liar. Yeah. So you just remember, whenever he's talking some stuff to you, he, he ain't nothing but a liar. How many people like to talk to a liar? How many people like to listen to a liar? Well, quit it. Quit it. Quit listening to him. Yeah. Hey, he's the one that's making your life miserable. He's the one that makes my life miserable. That's the way he works. Why does he do it? Because he knows it works. He knows it works. He knows, my friend, that if he can get you down and you listen to him, it'll work. But what you got to do is like Hezekiah. You got to listen to the word of God. Look at verse 7. He listened. Behold, he said, I will send a blast unto him, and he shall hear a rumor, and he shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. The Lord said, You ain't got to worry about him, Hezekiah. He's out of here, and he's going to die at his own place with his own sword. You think about it. Man, Hezekiah, he could have just heard the word and let it go. But no, he heard the word. He trusted the word. He believed the word. And he took on to that. And that's what God's people have to do. We have to go all the way. You can fear the devil. Or you can believe in God, as I've already said several times. If you believe God created this heaven and this earth and, and, and that he came as a babe and he uh, died on a cross, he arose and he's coming back. He saved my sorry soul and your soul from a devil's hell. If you believe that, why don't you believe he can take care of what you're up against? Again, that's, e that's an easy preach, but it's again a hard thing to live. Look, God had Hezekiah, as I've already said, he, he said, you don't have to worry about it. I'm taking care of all. You don't got to worry about an army. You ain't got to worry about horses. You ain't got to worry about chariots. You don't have to worry about nothing because I'm going to take care of it. That's what God might be when we're trying to tell somebody right here. I'm going to take care of it. But guess what? You have to allow him to take care of it. How many, everybody, how many people here other than me, this whole audience right here, has tried to help God? You think he needs my help? No. no he don't need your help. Don't need my help. He just needs us to be there and allow him to work a lot of times. Oh, I know he wants us to do things, but he wants us to work. <laughs> and I believe this is what he was telling uh, Hezekiah. Now, Hezekiah, this old Syrian king, he's been ragging you, ain't he? I mean, he's been scaring you. He's been trash-talking you. Don't worry about it. He's not really trash-talking you. He's trash-talking me. Now, I bet you something, if y'all started talking some trash about me, oh, Floyd back there, that's my daddy. <laughs> and my daddy, even though he's 86 years old, he can swing a mean cane. <laughs> what am I saying? What he was saying, hey, Hezekiah, don't you worry about it. That old bully is trying to get a hold of you. I'm your daddy. Your daddy's going to take care of you. Your daddy, I handle. And that's so, again, so easily said. Preacher, I know that God's going to take care of it, but I'm going through this. Just hold on. Hold on. Look, Hezekiah, the same place. He had to hold on. But look what else he did. Number two, what did he do? He did this right here. He practiced believing his prayer. He practiced believing his prayer. I mean, if you don't believe your prayer, you're not practicing it. You've got to believe what you pray. 
And, and that's what he did. Look, I mean, th this is not a, a, a prayer uh, with power. Oh, God, I'm sinking. Oh, God, I'm going down for the third time. Oh, God, I'm sucking water in my lungs right now. That, that's not a prayer of confidence. That's not a, a prayer of believing. That's a, a, a wimpy prayer. What you have to do is pray to God and, and, and go to Him in urgency. And that's what King Hezekiah did. He, he went to Him in urgency. Look at verse 14. And Hezekiah received the letter. He received that letter and he, he prayed. He, he, he believed. Uh, uh, he took the letter and he, the, the messenger uh, the messenger, excuse me, and, and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and he spread it before the Lord. I mean, he, he didn't let it bother him. I mean, he sat there and he allowed God to speak. You know, isn't it, isn't it funny? You, everything could be going good and you go down to your mailbox and you open it up and you get those letters out. Have you ever done that before? Pick the letter up and you open that thing and it devastates you? Like, uh, hey, you late on your payment, or I'm thinking you come get your house, or something bad fixing to take place. I, I've had some of those letters. Or, or have you ever opened an email and somebody sent you something, man, threatening you? Or, or maybe a text. Or, or, or maybe it was just listening to the TV and it started overwhelming. I mean, what I'm trying to say is bad news is going to come. But you got a God that can give you some good news. And just listen to what he's got to say. Listen to how he wants to help. I mean, he, he Hezekiah, I, I like this. He, he, he didn't, he didn't get, hey, Bill, Bill, they're coming after me, man. What are we going to do? He didn't, he didn't go over, hey, Gene, something's happening. I, I, I need your help. They're, they're going to overcome us. Or, or what's your name? Pat, Pat, they're going to come get me. Rock to they, they're going to come tear us up. said that he took the letter. He read the letter. And it said that he took the letter. And he laid the letter on the altar and he went to God. That's what the people of God are going to have to start doing once again. Hey, the altars in a Baptist church is probably the least thing used anymore. Period. I hate to say that. Even here. Even here. Yes, we have. We had someone come this morning. I know and pray and thank God for that. But I believe if we want to see this nation change, you want to see your home change, you want to see your life change, you want to see this world change, you're going to have to get on your knees at this altar and you're going to have to quit listening to that devil and tell you, you don't need to come down to that altar. Those people don't want to, they may be thinking something about you. The heck with what these people think. If anybody in this church thinks about something, somebody coming down here to this altar, you need to get right with God. We need to get down here and we need to pray our hearts out because we don't know what's fixing to take place in this whole world. I'm not afraid of it, but I'm going to pray to God just like Heather died, man. I'm going to turn it over to him. I can't turn it over to a Democrat. I can't turn it over to a Republican. I can't turn it over to an Independent. I can't even turn it over to anybody. I have to turn it over to God. Amen. Hey, you're going to believe in Biden. You're going to believe in Trump. You're in a lot of trouble. I like one of them. I can't tell you which one it is. I lose the job. <laughs> And I can tell you this too. God did not always use the most godless king in the world to lead his people and to get them through trash. Amen. You better start listening to the word of God and reading the word of God, knowing what the word of God says, and the word of God tell you how to get the boat. I will let them from that's free. <laughs> he took that. He took it. And he laid it out. And he talked to somebody that could do something about it. Oh, you can come talk to me. I'll give you some advice. I'm going to tell you the best advice you'll get is from God Almighty. Amen. And the only reason a lot of times we Amen. can't get advice, the only time I can't get advice, I won't sit there long enough and listen to what he's got to say, or he doesn't say what I want him to say. I've had people say, what, what do I need to do in a certain situation? And I give them my advice what they should do in a certain situation. I wish I wouldn't ever give it to them because they didn't even listen to what I said. Hey. Hezekiah, he brought it down there and he said, hey, look, look what he, hey, he, he believed in God. He believed his prayer. He, he laid it out. Look at verse 19, what he said. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of the hand. Deliver us, God. Help me, God, please. I mean, he's just being truthful. Help us, God. That all the kingdoms of the earth, he, he's wanting to make known, not by what I've done, all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God 
and thou only. That's what the church is going to have to do. We're going to have to start praying so this world knows that there's a God and he's the only God on it. God ain't a dollar bill. I didn't hear that, did you? God ain't a dollar bill. Amen. God ain't a governor. Amen. God is a holy and a just person that loves us, who died for us, who saves us, and who gives every one of us an opportunity to be with him forevermore. Amen. That's who God is. That's right. And that, this world can't do that. So we have to pay attention and, and listen very closely. Hezekiah saying, you know, Lord, what I want you to do. And, and, and sometimes what we have to do is this, just like Hezekiah, he was specific. Get rid of my enemy. Now, I don't know what your enemy was, but I know I prayed for God to get rid of different enemies in my life. I, I prayed for him to get rid of pornography. I prayed for him to get rid of, uh, uh, man, I used to have a sailor's mount, and he just took that. You know, I, I fell off and got hurt like that, and you know I didn't cuss again? Praise God. I broke both my ankles, and the first thing I asked my wife, what was it, honey? Did I cuss? That's exactly right. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you what, cussing is just like riding a bicycle. You don't ever forget how. It comes right back. <laughs> don't act, hey, don't have to act so spiritual to me. <laughs> he said, specific. I remember specific on alcohol. God, I can't do it. God, you got to take this from me. God, it's going to destroy my life and my family. And you know what? He answered that prayer. Because I've done everything I could to stop. I've done everything I could to stop cussing. I did everything I could stop to do other different things that was in my life. But you know what? When I got serious and I got specific, you might need to call out on a, a person. You might need to call out on a situation. It might be a job. It might be a finance again. It might, it, it might be a, a, a hurt, a sickness, whatever. Be specific to God. Well, preacher, God already knows what it is. You know what? Sometimes he wants to see if you know what it is. Sometimes what you think it is ain't what it really is a lot of times. I had a lady tell me uh, years ago, I mean, talking to the doctor said doctor I, I gotta have a hip surgery I mean my hips I can't I, I can't make it with my hip and, and went to the doctor and the doctor said it ain't got a thing to do with your hip it's your knee she said my knee don't hurt it's my hip he said well your knees wore out and it's putting pressure on your hips you got a knee replacement her hip quit hurting she thought she was trying so many of us are trying to doctor ourselves is what I'm trying to say anybody here got a doctor's degree PhD. I just got a. That's all I got. I ain't got no degree. I'm just trying. Be specific to God. That's what Hezekiah was. God, my enemy, he's breathing down our throat. He's going to come in here and he's going to take everything, destroy everything. He was specific. And that's what I like. Just be in there and tell God, just be truthful. Victory don't come in this world by accident. It comes on purpose. Nobody accidentally wins a race. Nobody accidentally gets a promotion. It's by hard work. It's by traveling on. How do you overcome fear and overcome world? Number one, you're going to turn to God. Number two, you're going to practice your prayers. You're going to believe. You're going to believe. Them. And number three, you're going to expect divine intervention. you got to expect divine intervention. And, and that's what I like, you know. Folks, we got a secret weapon. You know what that secret weapon is? It's the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. He can be anywhere, everywhere. And man, He can comfort you, help you, hold you. He can do all these things. That's a secret weapon. That's what the world don't have. Thank God I've got the Holy Spirit. How many people are glad you got the Holy Spirit? Amen. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you what. I don't want us to get too, you know, thank you. Hey, we need to get Baptist, okay? You've heard that before. We're Pentecostal. Maybe, maybe we just need to get the Baptist out of it and just get Costal, you know, go crazy over God. What He's done. How real he is and how true he is. That secret weapon. This is not a fable. This is not some little tale. This is the real deal, what I'm talking about. Amen. What I've preached to you today Amen. is a real happiness. It's took place. It's not some little story like us preachers get up here and say a little story and break your heart and get you all tore up. This is the real thing I'm talking about today. And that's what God did. God. He wants to fight the battles, and I've already said the battles he can't fight is the ones I don't let him in on. 
Hezekiah said, you come on, brother. He said, I'm ready for you to fight this battle. I am not wanting anything to do with us. And that's what took place. God took the, 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 uh, the battle and he won it. Look, look at verse 35. This is what I like. Let's read it. It says, and it came to pass that night, the night after Hezekiah prayed, that the angel of the Lord went out and smote the camp of the Syrians. Now I want you to go up and I want you to look at that word just a minute with me. I had never really paid any attention to that word, but uh, it's very important. Look at the word angel. Now we've got some teachers in this, in this place. And I want you to tell me, is that word angel, is that singular or plural? Oh my goodness. <laughs> is, that word, is that angel singular or plural? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all did learn something in school. What angel? Hey, I want you to tell you what, you need to pay attention to information. God didn't say, I need a whole legion of angels. I don't need a troop of angels. I don't need a, 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 a company of angels. Hey, Father, come here. One angel. One angel. That's all it was. I, I, bet, I bet this is what the Lord looked at. 185,000 troops. Fiction to come and descend upon that city. He probably said, Puh, what are they doing? <laughs> just laugh at them. Here, here's the picture of what it would be. Let's, figure, let's say there's 185,000 people right outside of Mitchell County fixing to come in. That, that's what's about what was fixing to take place. And it said that night, they went to bed alive. And they woke up dead. How about that? 185,000. You can't wake up dead yet. <laughs> Sounded good for a minute. <laughs> the Lord said, you got your mind. They went to bed alive, and then they died. How many angels did it take to go through Egypt that night? You remember? God he called and said a death angel. He didn't call for a whole bunch of angels to go through Egypt to get rid of just one. So uh, just understand this. All you need is one angel. You and the angels, you and God, you are the majority. You are going to win. You will have victory. Now my guardian angel is probably going to kill me when I get through. I am. Mm. Rob, can I tell him you're, you're the one that told me that, it's that story? He told me if I was going to be stupid, I was going to have to be tough. <laughs> God doesn't want us to be stupid, and He don't want us to be tough. He doesn't want us to be ignorant. He just wants us to know that fear is going to come our way, and whenever it comes our way, we got a God that's big enough to take care of whatever fear that you and I have. And I'm thankful for what He has done. I really am. That ought to encourage you. That's good news. I know I went over. Heck, I didn't get to preach last week, so I'm giving you a little extra. Okay. <laughs> That ought to excite you. The God who can save you from problems and the God who can save you from trials, the God who gave you this book to read, the God who saved our soul from hell, that ought to excite me, energize me, and help me through whatever I'm going to go through. Again, it's easy to talk like that, but when you start practicing it, it'll sure help you. Let me share something with you and I'll be through. When Satan... Starts shooting you a lot of junk, a lot of lines. Just to remind him, as I've already said, he's a liar. Just let him know that God is going to take care of you. Let him know when, when fear comes into you, I'm going to turn to God's Word. Get into the Word of God, and you can find these stories. Get into the Word of God. Pray to God, believe in like nothing else. And number three, does anybody know what my third point was? Expect divine intervention. If you don't expect God to do something, why is He going to do anything? I'm expecting God to do great things. And I want to see Him do it. Let's go to God in prayer. My Heavenly Father, it is great to be back in the pulpit. It's great to be with your people. It's even greater to hear your word and God says you hey, how real it is. Now, you, how you, what you did for Hezekiah, Lord, you can do for anyone sitting in this audience today. What you did for Hezekiah in Israel, God, you can do for any nation. And I thank you, Lord, 
that we had that privilege to pray and we had that privilege to, to believe and trust it and help us, God, to do that. Help us, Lord, today if we're up against something, we need something, God. Let us understand just as Hezekiah, open it up, put it before God, put it in your hands, allow you to take it. Give us victory. And I pray this in your sweet name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand to our feet and we just bow our heads. These altars are open. We just ask you to be faithful to God. out of this church that you brought in. Just come and give it to God, okay? The Lord will help you on whatever you go through, whatever you're facing, whatever you need. That's the God that we have. That's the God who loves us and cares for us. Just be faithful to Him. As Hezekiah was, and God is faithful back. Satan buffalo you here, folks. Don't let him buffalo you. We're going to play another stanza. Just be true to God. I'm not 
be talking to somebody today who's ready to take your battle. Give it to him. Allow him. Miss Betty, it's good. Like you said, you didn't know who wanted to be back here worse, me or you. I think we both wanted it pretty bad. We thank you, you're back. Uh, we just ask you to keep praying for one another. Pray for this church. Pray for our nation. Pray for yourself. Ask God to help. Philip, I'm going to ask you if you would dismiss us in prayer.